Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to be explaining how to hire and recruit soldiers and an apprentice into your warband for Frostgrave 2nd edition. Hey everybody, I'm Alan with Bricks and Blocks Gaming, the channel that plays tabletop games using toy bricks and blocks and discusses the rules and strategies that build the foundation for those games. Be sure to check the description box below where you'll find timestamps for this video as well as links to some of our other Frostgrave content. This video is part of a new player series where I will be taking a look at what you need to know to get started in the game of Frostgrave 2nd Edition. While you won't need the rulebook to follow along with this video, there's definitely too much in the second edition book for me to spoil everything here. So for this video, I will be discussing what units make up a warband, what an apprentice is, standard and specialist soldiers, basic strategies for soldier selection, and I'll create an example warband. Now let's get to the bricks and blocks of warband formation for Frostgrave second edition. After you've created a wizard, Next, they get to spend local currency, or gold crowns, hiring a warband. Your wizard starts with 400 gold crowns they can use to hire 8 soldiers, up to 4 of which can be the more skilled specialist soldiers. And in addition to these 8 units, the wizard can also hire an apprentice. Every figure in Frostgrave has a stat line. Move determines how many inches a unit can move on a standard movement. Fight determines any modifiers applied to their attack roll. Shoot determines any modifiers the figure gets if they fire a bow or a crossbow. Armor is subtracted from any damage the figure might take. Will is used when resisting certain spells and effects during the game. And health is the maximum damage a figure can receive before being removed from the battle. When forming a warband, the first figure you should consider recruiting is an apprentice, which is probably always worth hiring, and they'll use up 100 of your starting gold crowns. You're only allowed to have one of these units in your warband, and the apprentice along with the wizard are the only units in the game classified as spellcasters. Having an apprentice is important because having a second spellcaster on the table means you can dish out more magic, and the spells they cast or fail to cast earn experience points for your wizard. They know the same spells as your wizard, however since they aren't as skilled, a minus two penalty is applied to all their casting rolls. And if the wizard upgrades an existing spell or learns a new one during a campaign, so does the apprentice. The apprentice's starting stats are slightly weaker than a wizard's, and similar to growing in spell knowledge with the wizard, their stats increase whenever their wizard's stats increase. Also important is that during gameplay, the turn is broken up into various phases, and one of those phases is the apprentice phase, and you must have an apprentice on the board to do anything during that phase. I'll be explaining more about this in my video on how to play the game, which will be linked in the description box once it's released. The last thing I'll mention about The Apprentice is that you'll want to give this member a name. The Apprentice is an important part of your team, and a character that will likely be in your warband for a long time if you're playing a campaign. Assuming you hire an apprentice, you'll have 300 gold crowns to hire 8 soldiers. The title Soldier is a generic term in Frostgrave that doesn't necessarily mean a trained warrior, but rather whatever mercenaries you hire to assist your spellcasters. In the second edition of Frostgrave, soldiers are classified as either standard or specialists. Any number of your eight soldiers can be of the standard variety. These are unskilled grunts, greedy treasure seekers, and common mercenaries found throughout the city of Frostgrave. These standard soldiers include thugs, Anybody you can find who can hold a sword. There's nothing special about their stats, but they join you for free in the hopes of finding treasure or glory. Thieves. Soldiers who know more about running and escaping than fighting. They're also free to hire, and they're great for hauling treasures off the battlefield. Warhounds. A weak but very fast ally. It costs 10 gold crowns to train one for battle. Infantrymen. Soldiers that have learned to fight but haven't seen much true combat. They can hit hard with their two-handed weapons, but lack defensive qualities and grit. They ask for 50 gold crowns to join you. Men-at-arms are perhaps better trained and prepared for the dangers of Frostgrave than infantrymen. They balance their offense and defense, and charge 75 gold crowns for their services. And the Apothecary. 
These individuals can barely be called soldiers, as their experience is in the use of potions, not swords. As such, they start each game with a healing potion they can use on their allies. Someone with their knowledge and learning requires 75 gold crowns to risk traveling into the unknown ruins of Frostgrave. Of your eight soldiers, no more than four of them can be specialized soldiers. This is mostly a balancing mechanic for the game, but also represents how the specialists demand positions of authority in your warband. The specialist soldiers include archers, the most basic of bowmen. They're able to rain down arrows across the battlefield every turn. However, they aren't well suited for melee combat. They ask for 75 gold crowns to join a warband. Crossbowmen have the same stats as an archer, but carry a crossbow. Projectiles from these weapons deal extra damage, but take time to reload. They also require 75 gold crowns to hire. Treasure Hunters, fast and nimble adventurers that can move quickly around the battlefield, fight well in combat, and excel at securing treasure. They need 100 gold crowns to be convinced to join you. Trackers, hunters skilled in quickly traversing the ruins of Frostgrave to stalk their prey or search for treasure. Their services require 100 gold crowns. Knights, heavily armored, well-trained, and experienced warriors. These are the toughest soldiers you can hire and can serve as a wall on the battlefield. They expect to be compensated well, requiring 125 gold crowns to hire. Templars, heavily equipped warriors focus more on offense than defense. They essentially trade the sword and shield of the knight for a two-handed weapon that deals extra damage. They also refuse to follow someone who won't offer 125 gold crowns in payment. Rangers. These rugged, battle-hardened wanderers are skilled with the sword and the bow. They're agile and well-suited for the dangers the frozen city can present. These versatile soldiers expect 125 gold crowns to travel with a warband. Barbarians. Powerful warriors known equally for their ferocity in combat and iron will when facing even the most vile and dangerous beasts that have thawed in Frostgrave. The 125 gold crowns needed to seek out and recruit these soldiers is well worth the price. Marksmen. Armored crossbowmen equally trained and equipped for both ranged and melee combat, carrying a crossbow and a sword. These soldiers ask for 125 gold crowns to join a warband. Unlike your spellcasters, your soldiers are a bit more expendable and fickle with their loyalties and will probably be coming and going or dying more frequently. So naming your soldiers isn't as important as naming your wizard or apprentice. As well as the 15 soldiers I've mentioned, the appendix of the second edition book mentions 15 more soldiers that can be found in the various supplements that were released before the updated edition was released. If you have those supplements and plan to include any of the additional soldiers, this appendix lets you know whether they are now classified as either standard or specialists. Which soldiers a wizard takes with him into the Frozen City is an important choice, and although their starting gold crowns somewhat limits their selection, there are some good options available. Some players like to always tend toward a specific strategy, like lots of archers, or focusing on fast soldiers, or maybe favorite soldier types. Maybe you have a miniature wearing shining armor you really want to use, so you decide to hire a knight. Some players find it advantageous to make their selections based on their wizard's current strengths or weaknesses, either to further strengthen a main strategy, or to bring balance to a lopsided spell selection. A good strategy for beginning players is to choose a variety that can cover different aspects of the game. And if you're new to tabletop gaming, or you're introducing someone like a reluctant buddy or significant other to the game, keeping things simple with only three or four different soldier types, like two treasure hunters, two infantrymen, two thugs, and two thieves, which uses all your starting gold crowns, might help so as not to overwhelm someone with too many options and stats to remember. In my video on wizard creation, which is linked in the description, I made a wizard from the Sigilist School of Magic, and now he needs a warband. So the first thing he's going to do is spend 100 gold crowns to train an apprentice. Looking over my spell list, my wizard doesn't have great ways to magically move figures across the battlefield, so he'll hire a speedy treasure hunter for another 100 gold crowns. Next, he'll pay 75 gold crowns to enlist an archer to offer him some ranged support. 
Then he'll use his remaining funds to recruit a man-at-arms for 75 gold crowns and an infantryman for 50 gold crowns to add some punch to his melee combat. With four soldier slots remaining and no gold crowns left, he'll convince two local thugs and two petty thieves to join him with nothing but the lure of finding treasure and fame through adventures in the ruins of Frostgrave. I now have my wizard created and his warband formed, which means I'm ready to set up my table and play a game of Frostgrave. And I'll be releasing a video that will explain both how to set up a proper Frostgrave table and the basic rules for how to play the game, which you'll want to check out. But if you have any questions, you can leave those in the comments below or check out the Frostgrave Facebook or Reddit sites where players like myself have asked questions and had responses from both the community and the author Joseph McCullough himself. I want to thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to click like, add a comment, or subscribe so you can keep up with all the content that I'm releasing. And with that, I'm Alan with Bricks and Blocks Gaming, and I'll see you on the next video.